Welcome, everyone. It is the Think Different Podcast. Another week of Apple Talk here with your two favorite keto fit people in the world. I am Will TLD, the former Apple specialist, creative and genius. I worked at the Apple retail store for over 11 years, but I'm also with my co host. He worked with Apple for 10 years. He is the former Apple creative, book publishing. Jurassic Park owner, retirement home <laughs> president, the keto trout drummer himself, Mr. Frank Funk. Hey, what's up, Will? How you doing today? That's right, man. I just keep tackling it on, man. Tackling Sick. everything on there. All right, Mr. Retirement here, enjoying his wonderful, you know, basement right now. That's you know, right. Running for yep. president of his retirement home at some point, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Well, for those who don't know, we actually got together for lunch for the first time. So it's been at least, what, maybe three years since we saw each other in person. Yeah. When we bet on the Eagles game and I lost and I, I mm -hmm. owed you a lunch. So, yep. And I was yummy in my tummy for that one. That's right. Uh, but this time it was just a mutual meeting uh, because I work not too far from where he lives. So it just worked out that we got together, which I hope we did to do again. So that yeah. was nice. you know, we should have took a picture, but, you know, you know, yeah. we, Hey, yeah, we it's see not like we us. have a camera with us all the time or anything. Yeah, no, we don't have that stuff <laughs> with us. But speaking of camera, you might want to be careful what you're taking pictures of because you pedophiles and you child abusers out <laughs> there, uh, you're in trouble now because this episode is dedicated for one thing, and that is talking about what is going on with Apple regarding their privacy and when it comes to child safety. Uh, this came out about two weeks ago. Uh, people were very... Uh, uptight about this the fact that apple will be now going and scanning through your icloud photos in your phone uh to scan for child pornography as well as child abuse well uh, it, now it, it's not scanning the photos it's it's reviewing well, information in the photo through um a mathematical equation and uh I forget what they like, a, like a, some sort of hashing tag or something. Yes, we're going to actually show three different views of this problem. Uh, these are three places that I watch videos, so I figured it was good to bring it up. But Apple, at the first two first couple of weeks, basically just didn't answer any questions about it until it came to the point where people were just freaked out. And finally, Ap Apple's Craig Federini finally came out on the Wall Street Journal. Uh, which happens to be like their channel they go to anytime they talk about this stuff. Yes. Uh, and they discussed what, uh, you know, what this actually is doing. So I thought it'd be important to see what people thought of maybe a week ago compared to now and then compared to what Apple responded with. And so we're going to have three different videos and we're going to comment on them. But before we get started, make sure you leave us a five-star review. That's right. I want you guys <laughs> to go to my, our iTunes and leave us a review. And I'm, a, and by the way, you don't know this, Brent, but I'm part of a Quaker Bridge group, a former Apple employee Quaker Bridge group on Facebook. You can't join that, but it, we're seeing, I'm seeing some old faces on there, uh, which has been great. So plug the way on the podcast. So you people who went and actually listened to this episode, leave us a damn review. Uh, while I drink, my non-sponsored Zevia, of course, public stock now. Yeah. Did it go up or down ah, today? It's down. Everything was down today. Ooh. You know, so yeah, I'm sorry. I can't win them all. Bye, bye, bye. Now's the time to buy. That's right. So let's talk about what this is. So I'm going to bring up exactly what Apple published on their website. And it basically says, we want to help protect children from predators who use communication tools to recruit and exploit them and limit the spread of child sexual abuse material, which is in short called CSAM, uh, because you'll be hearing that a lot. Apple's introducing a new child safety feature in three areas developed in collaboration with child safety experts. First, new communication tools will enable parents to play a more informed role in helping their children navigate communication online. And what they're going to be doing is that the messages app will use on-device machine learning to learn about sensitive content that you don't want them to see. Also, they are going to be providing a CSAM detection, which will help Apple improve valuable information to law enforcement on collection of CSAM in 
iCloud Photos. And finally, Siri and Search provide parents and children expanded information if and help if they encounter unsafe situations. It will also intervene when you're trying to search for CSAM-related topics. So those are the three things that they're coming out with. Now it's time to talk about, well, Frank, do you have anything to say about Apple's uh, statement? Well, <clears throat> this, <clears throat> I, I feel that something has to be done in this area. Um, no matter what Apple or any, any other tech company does, it, it's always going to um, meet with some scrutiny. Um, it's either e people are either going to say you're opening a back door to privacy, and once you open that back door for this, then it can be used for something else. And I, I think that's the crux of the whole issue with those that are like, well, I don't know about this. It's not that anyone is opposed to uh, stopping, you know, child abuse or child pornography, um, but it's using that to get a foothold into, well, if we can do it for that, we can do it for this. And then who determines what those other topics are? That's... Now now, other companies are already doing this with photos now. You can go to Dropbox, Google, uh, Amazon Photos. Everyone's already doing this. In fact, they're scanning your whole library. It's not right. even going to be like portions of it, even Facebook too. So that's why we have to clear this up. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. We're going to watch a video real quick. I'll pause and stop in between it uh, to see if there's anything – that Frank wants to say, because, you know, he's older, so he cares a lot about, <laughs> you know, but also I have a child, I have an eight month old. What, how is this going to impact my life now? Uh, where Frank is just too old to not even have children anymore. So. <laughs> you don't know that. Uh, uh, hey, hey, God bless you. Maybe this keto will uh, help you create more children. That's not a bad thing. All right. So let me go ahead and share this. If you've been watching our show, if you watched our show over the last uh, week or so, uh, you know that I've been covering the Apple story where they've now, of course, been rolling out this new feature. And they've been very proud of this feature that would scan the photos of children, basically, in iCloud photos. So Apple, it would be on device and it would scan the photos. And if it found that there was anything, um, any child abuse or I suppose it could be anything, any nudity related items as well as it relates to children. They're going to, it would be flagged. And then it would be ultimately, uh, the parents would be sent a text message alerting them. Like, so if they discovered on their kids' phones, it would be, they would be sent a text message. But also then it would be flagged. And it would be flagged internally at Apple where a human being would then review these photos to see if, in fact, it was child abuse, if it wasn't just a, a kid with a scraped knee because they fell in the park and the mom took a photo of it. Like, how do you know? The idea, of course, we've been hearing from Apple is that the, the AI is so good that they're not going to have any problems. There's not going to be any problems. Like, we'll be able to scan these photos of children and, and we'll be able to review them and it should be fine. We're not going to get any false positives here. It, it, you know, it, we, we, we stand by this technology. They haven't released an internal memo. Apple was so proud of this, saying, you know, this is a fantastic, you know, standing up. We're standing up for the rights of children, protecting children. We're going to help reduce child abuse across the world. Uh, and, and in the United States, we'll alert police departments when we believe that child abuse is going on. You're on the right of good here. And I raise the concern that this is, to me, a bridge too far, <laughs> that Apple has gone, has done really a big shift here. You remember a number of years ago from Apple they literally told the FBI to go screw themselves because the FBI wanted Apple to basically build a back door into a, uh, an iPhone of a terrorist and unlock it. And Apple said, we don't have that technology. We cannot unlock their phone. And the FBI said, build that technology. And Apple said, we cannot do that because once we do that, then that gives access, other bad actors access to anyone's phone in the world and we won't do it. Yeah, so I was wondering... That's the thing I thought I heard a lot of people brought up. Well, if they didn't do it for 
this terrorist, you know, why are they now changing their stance right, on it? Right. So now, by the way, what I'm listen if you're just listening, uh, this is a show called Morning Invest. I actually listened to this guy. He's supposed to be like a impartial guy. He was a former uh, newscaster or news uh, uh, reporter uh, that d- does a show. Um, he tries to be a middleman on everything, uh, mm-hmm. but there's always a time where he's always very one sided on stuff. Uh, this was the case where he's definitely against Apple on it, but I don't know anything. You have any thoughts on that one, Frank? Well, and that's, that's exactly what I was saying. It's like, this is, this is the opposition and Apple's going to run into. It's like, Hey, you didn't do it for this. Now you're doing it for um, photos. So what's to say down the line, you're not going to do it for something else. It, I, I don't know. It, it's very tough. You know, to say, especially when you're dealing with the web, I mean, you it, you put something out there and it's out there for anybody and everybody. So um, and, and actually, that's why, you know, pornography is is prolific out there. And I think at what Apple's trying to do is to help, um, you know, prevent that as much as possible, whether whether a child stumbles upon something or somebody takes pictures um and they put them out there so it it i'm leaning right now to to letting this technology be released and to see where it leads Um, the guy looks drunk on the screen look (laughs) it looks tired as hell yeah i'm gonna keep playing the video and they stood up to that and the fear of this too is like you know this is kind of like um, you know, there was an individual in the, the Me Too movement that completely lost everything, his job, his career, everything. And then the woman came forward and said she was lying. But at that time, by then, his public life was ruined. And this has the same potential. If, if they show up, like they, they say they alert the police, the police show up at your, at your house on a false positive and your neighbors happen to be around and they overhear the conversation it doesn't matter if you prove yourself innocent to the police or whatever. Those people are still going to see you as guilty. And, and so this is, this is a bridge way too far because of all the, like, I don't know how they could guarantee no false positives. That's impossible. There's it's no impossible. way that could happen. It's a- yeah. Is that possible? you think Frank? Uh, well, I don't to guarantee that there's not going to be any false positives. No, I don't, I don't think it's possible. Um, but I mean, my biggest worry I, is that, that it's flagged and, the authorities are up, come up to your door unexpectedly, and that you say, "Well, hey, we got child pornography." No, it's just a, it's just a kid, you know, naked right. in my house. You know that that's right, right. You know that, that's the fear is that uh, is somewhat, but of course there is a human element to watching it. It's not just AI, and right, this is right. the one thing that they're not paying attention is that someone's going to be looking at it, which they do. I think. And when that's well. what you stand by, who in that company thought that was like who was like this is a great idea. We can surveil people's photos and we can like, like, I, I'm sure there's somebody who thinks it's noble. There, there probably is somebody that thinks it's noble, but there has to be people around them that are like, no, this is too much. We, we can't, we, it's like, we're not the policemen of the world. We're not the policemen of our users, because if you're going to go that far, then you know what, then how many people are going to, then are you going to hold yourselves responsible when people use your phones to commit um, violent acts? Right. Like, if you're going to put yourself in there and you're going to police things, well, then you're going to be in there for everything. Yeah. So that that's exactly what you said, Frank. Yeah. Is, you know, their fear is that someone is going to use this for another reason, not just for this one reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 I don't know. It's very tough. Um, again, it's a noble idea. Uh but, well, let's hear what Ed, Edward Snowden, you know, we know he's a very popular guy. Yeah. Um, let's see what uh, NSA was doing, Twitter already said. spying on the American people, had this to say about it. No matter how well-intentioned Apple is rolling out mass surveillance to the entire world with this, make no mistake, if they scan for kitty porn today, they can scan for anything tomorrow. They turned a trillion dollars of devices into iNarks without asking. Apple says to protect children, they are updating every iPhone to continuously compare your photos and cloud storage against a secret blacklist of photos. If it finds a hit, they call the cops. iOS will also tell your parents if you view a nude in iMessage. So if a kid gets a message that has a nude photo in it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know, so, if, it, if a nude message comes through and your kid is. And I, and I think that's something that is good. I, you know, of course right. you, your child has to be on a Apple ID child account or um, first. Right. Like, right. That's straight. Uh, you know, and then like, you know, for me and my, you knowing me and my child, if I get a notification about that, I want to know because if a friend yes. is sending a nude photo that he's too young to understand, Yep. Why would I, you know, why would I not want to see that? Right. Right. And, you know, um, see, I, I think there's two, two points here. One is all of this stuff with Snowden is kind of going, well, he's going way the other way. Mm -hmm. And the second point that I wanted to make is that as a concerned parent, you need to be aware of the capacity of these devices and what the pot what they potentially could do and and whether your son or daughter is actively seeking these types of photos out or is inadvertently hitting on a site mm -hmm. which i mean can happen yep and you know if you're not the type of parent that's standing over the shoulder of your son or daughter it's extremely hard to understand what they're doing, um, yep. wh whether intentionally or unintentionally. So as a parent, I would have to say, you know what? I, I, you know, I want to know. Yeah. But let's go to the next thing. This is a controversial issue. We've talked about it. We talked about it yesterday with a privacy advocate uh, who was very critical of Apple. But it, it seems to me that a lot of people are misunderstanding what Apple is doing here, in part because the backup of your photos, it's almost on by default. Lots of people have iCloud turned on, whether they're using it and paying for it or not. Is that part of the difficulty here? Yeah, because, uh, I mean, Apple knows the answers to some of this. They know how many people use iCloud Photos and how many photos they have in it. But we don't, and they don't really publicly announce it. And one of the longtime criticisms of Apple's online services is that the free tier of iCloud has had a five gigabyte storage limit forever. I mean, going back. Yeah, that, let's pause there. That, I mean... I always look at it as, as I now look at it as that's a free trial to see what that actually does. I know right. five gigs is terrible, but also Apple. I don't. I don't. I don't see Apple ever increasing that. Well, I don't. I don't understand what his point is. Okay. Well, I think he's going to get to the point. Uh, but at let's least ten years, it. which is not a lot, considering that that's supposed Basically to that, I think all of the photos are for you're forced to use it. That's what I think that they're referring to. If you're using photo backup, all of your device backups, if you're using online device backups, which people should, because it's a great feature that keeps all of your stuff ready to go if you need to download it to a new device. Um, but most people can't fit it all in five gigabytes. So who knows how many people are doing it? John, part of the issue here too, is that cloud services, cloud specific services have been searching for these child pornography images from the known database for a long time. Right. Right. So uh, if you're if you're backing your photos up on Google Photos and an Android device, et cetera, you know, Dropbox. We we're just talking to Drew Houston about this last week. Mm. It's already been happening. Uh, is this, in your view, a uh, a contradiction to Apple's stated policies on backdoors into phones or um, on, you know, keeping government out of phones or no? I I think not, but it's it, it, it is definitely a slippery slope. I know that that phrase gets used a lot, but Apple, from my conversations with them and reading their documentation, is painfully aware of how delicate this needs to be to be very specific to this issue. And just just to throw out some numbers, so it, NICMEC, the National Center for Missing and Endangered Children, is the only organization that is allowed to hold this material there. And, and if an online provider comes across it, they must report it. And that's the organization. And they publish the numbers of what these cloud providers report. Facebook reported 20 million instances in 2020. It's just a staggering number. That, that is a crazy number. Yes. That's, 20 yeah. million occurrences. Occurrences. That yeah. is a lot. 
I mean, that's just in Facebook. That's just in Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I did the math. It's like, it, it's sickening. It's like fifty five thousand a day, every day, three hundred sixty five <laughs> days a year. Apple only reported like two hundred cases, and that's because the way that Apple set up was Apple doesn't come across it. And so I believe that most of those or all of those two hundred is when law enforcement would come to Apple and say, "We we're looking at this individual. Here's a warrant. Can we look at this person's photos?" And then they're okay. Here now we have to report these photos to Nick Mac. But two twenty million versus 200 shows that a Apple just wasn't really doing it. And the law isn't written that these companies have to go and look for it. They don't have to search for it. All, what they have to do is if they do come across it, if they're made aware of it, they do have to report it. Yeah, so that that's the argument on this one. So he is leaning more towards the side of understanding Apple and that they have a special algorithm in place. Right. And they're trying um, to be more proactive. Right. And that they're not forced to do this. Like, again, they do not have to do what they're doing, uh, but they feel like there is a problem with it. You know, and that's my question. Do you, why do you think Apple now is just like, we got to do this? Well, I, I just think because the whole child pornography and the whole pornography business is, is humongous. I mean, it's, it's billions of dollars. And, uh, uh, you know, I just believe that they feel, you know what, they got to try to do something to kind of stem the abuse. Um, and <clears throat> again, you know, is it a bridge too far? Uh, that that remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. is the bridge necessary? I would say yes. Okay. Well, Apple decided to finally come out and talk about it with the Wall Street Journal. So now let's hear from... Craig Federighi and the Wall Street Journal on basically how Apple's explaining it. It's not every day an Apple executive admits to widespread confusion over new policies related to fighting child pornography. Yet, here we are. I grant you, in hindsight, introducing these two features at the same time was a recipe for this kind of confusion. Last week, Apple introduced new child protection features, one related to spotting and reporting illegal child sexual abuse material, AKA CSAM, or child pornography, and another related to spotting nudes in text messages sent to, and often from, children. It's really clear a lot of messages got jumbled uh, pretty badly. A lot of people got mad, and got mad real fast. Not because they don't think child pornography is horrible, but because of the seemingly controversial way Apple was spotting this content, and a feeling that the company was crossing the line by scanning the contents of their phones. I do believe the soundbite that got out early was, oh my God, Apple is scanning my phone for images. This is not what is happening. I sat down with Apple's software chief, Craig Feder. So anything to add to that before? Well, I... <laughs> It's, like I said, this is a very delicate issue, but as, as a parent, uh, why wouldn't you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, also if you, but also if you're a, uh, if you're a uh, <laughs> active, now, by the way, you don't have to have iCloud photos turned on here. Let's get right. that straight. Right. That right. is an option yes. uh, to do. Right. It's just like having a, a, an Apple ID child account is an option to do. But, uh, but think about from the other video, they said, what was it, uh, Facebook, 200,000 occurrences they reported. A well, day. A day. So, so, so in Facebook, this is already happening. They're already doing it. And mm -hmm. they scan every photo you put up there, no matter what, whether, yes. whether they ask you or not. So, right. I mean, because it's Apple... Yeah. Somehow it's turned because into they, a big well, deal. Because they tout the privacy. That's why they tell well, yeah. everything on your device is your, your stuff. You know, that's but, but what they're doing in this process is alerting the parents. Nobody, I mean, does Facebook ever alert any of the parents on down? They don't, they don't alert anybody. They just report it. Right. So one, the features to spot CSAM Two, the messaging feature. It's all confusing, but it's important to understand what's happening and what control you do and don't have. In the simplest terms possible, how is Apple looking for child pornography on iPhones? 
So to be clear, we're not actually looking for child pornography on iPhones. That's the first root of the misunderstanding. What we're doing is we're finding illegal uh, images of child uh, pornography stored in iCloud. If you look at any other cloud service, they currently are scanning photos by looking at every single photo in the cloud and analyzing it. We wanted to be able to spot such photos in the cloud without looking at people's photos and came up with an architecture to do this. And it's very important, we felt, before we could offer this kind of capability, uh, to do it in a way much, much more private than anything that's been done in this area before. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit more simply. So this is my iPhone. I get this update. What is happening to my iCloud photo library? So if you are a customer that is using iCloud Photo Library, which you don't have to, but if you're using iCloud Photo Library to store your photos in the cloud, then what's happening is a, um, a multi-part uh, algorithm where there's a degree of analysis done on your device as it uploads a photo to the cloud so that the cloud then can do the other half of the algorithm. And if and only if you meet a threshold of something on the order of 30 known uh, child pornographic images matching. Only then does Apple know anything about uh, your account. What do you think the 30 images are? <laughs> oh, the 30, the criteria? I, yeah. I, have, I, I have no idea, but- If I had to think of a I photo mean, of child, like, like, I'm trying to think of like, like, what is that, like, what does the image has to be for them well, to- Well, I mean, I mean, they've, they obviously have worked with multiple organizations to come up with some sort of criteria that it that an image has to meet in order to qualify. Right. Now, and that's what he's about to explain, but I'm trying to figure out like give me an example of an image. Like what would that be? Like a, a well, kid going down? Do, I don't know. Like I'm just trying to figure out do, what that is. Do, do you remember the the old copper tone um commercial? No, man, they, I'm not I'm young. Okay, well, I had a child. Okay, I had a child with a bathing suit, and a dog was pulling the child's bathing suit kind of off, and it showed their bottom. Perhaps that's something that would be under yes. this criteria might be flagged. All right. Uh, and know anything about those images. And at that point, uh, only knows about those images, not about any of your other images. And it should be clear, this isn't doing some analysis for, did you have a picture of uh, your child in the bathtub? What are they scared for Or for that matter, did you have a picture of some pornography of any other sort? This is literally only matching on the exact fingerprints of specific known uh, child pornographic images. Let's pause and talk about what's been so controversial here. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, Boo. or NICMEC, has no, a database of known CSAM. Sorry for all the acronyms. Other big tech companies, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, scan photos you upload to the cloud to find images that match any in the repository of NICMEC photos. Instead, Apple decided it wanted to do this on your device for privacy reasons. And that's what a lot of this controversy is about. On your phone, when um, images are uploaded to the iCloud photo libraries, part of that um, upload pipeline, there is a uh, what's called a neural hash performed on the image, and that neural hash is then intersected against a, a database that's on your device. Okay, pause again. Illegal photos have been converted into cryptographic codes, or a string of numbers that identify the characteristics of an image, what they call neural hashes. When your own photo is about to be uploaded to iCloud, the software generates a hash of it. The device cross-references your image hash to the CSAM hashes. And what comes out of that is basically some gobbledygook that at that point, your phone can't inter doesn't know whether it matched anything and neither does Apple. But that thing is, is wrapped up in what we call safety voucher. And when the photo is stored, so is the safety voucher. Pause again. The system makes a thing called a safety voucher which holds the match result. That is uploaded with the photo to iCloud. Then the second half of the process occurs in the cloud where these safety vouchers, uh, some math is done on the collection of all the safety vouchers and only if a threshold of uh, matches are achieved after a second pass of math, uh, does anything get learned. One last pause. In the cloud, 
if an account collects around 30 vouchers that correspond to illegal images, the account will be flagged to Apple's human moderators, who then review the vouchers and see if they actually contain illegal images. If they now, question is, who's going to take that job? <laughs> like, yeah. like, think about it. Like, it's like you are the child pornographer viewer looker. What's your What does your experience have to be? I, <laughs> you got to be a pedophile. <laughs> well, that is, and that's the fear, right? Imagine uh, if they hire I, someone that is a pedophile. I well, uh, like I a first timer. Uh, yeah. Well, but I, you know, conversely, you look at this and you go, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's mm -hmm. it's not just somebody scanning on. Oh, hey, check out this photo. Check out the. Yep. I mean, there's a a lot of criteria. That's right. going into this. Right. And by the way, they were very open to what this was before, like the like of course the media went crazy over it. And yeah. you know, look at Snowden, who, you know, he's all about the security of, of, of people, but my God, he, he jumped to a conclusion. But I would think he knows what this all means, you know. Oh. So that's why, you know, that's why I think it's very interesting. Uh so let's uh, for storing let's images in iCloud. Why did you decide to release this right now? Was there pressure to do it? No, um, really, it came down to we figured it out. We've wanted to do something, but we've been unwilling to deploy a solution that would involve scanning all customer data. Tim Cook said earlier this year, we've spoken out time and again for, for strong, strong encryption without backdoors, recognizing that security is the foundation of privacy. But isn't this in a way a backdoor? I, I think in no way is this a backdoor. I don't I don't understand. I, I really don't understand that characterization. Imagine, imagine someone was scanning images in the cloud. Well, who knows what's being scanned for? In our case, the database is shipped on device. People can see, and it's a single image across all countries. We ship the same software in China with the same database as we ship in America, as we ship in Europe. If someone were to come to Apple, Apple would say no. But let's say you aren't confident. You don't want to you don't want to just rely on Apple saying no. You want to be sure that Apple couldn't get away with it if we said yes. Well, that was the bar we set for ourselves in releasing this kind of system. There are multiple levels of auditability, and so we're making sure that you don't have to trust any one entity or even any one country uh, as far as how uh, these images are, are uh, what images are part of this process. And th that's another thing. People thought about China, right? China is the number one right. thinking. Like, so Apple has to, uh, you know, abide by their laws. So if they pass a law that says, hey, Apple, I need to look at your phones for this, this, and this, is Apple going to cave in? to the government and do it, or are they just not going to sell iPhones there anymore? Or maybe they no. won't publish an update there anymore. That's a know. question. Yeah, yeah, see, that's a question. Yeah. See, that's why they're mentioning other countries. China is the reason why they're at there. Yeah, now. yeah. Uh, because the, the rumor was that they could force their hand into doing something. Well, uh, don't forget, China, China, I mean, China is the biggest area where iPhone technology is copied. <laughs> and and pirated, you know, so. I want to just move on to the iMessage feature, which you guys are calling communication, safety, and messages. Simplest way possible. Explain it to me. No acronyms, no jargon. How does this work? <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, the capability is you turn this feature on uh, for your child, and your child received an image coming in that was potentially uh, um, you know, po pornographic uh, content. The image would be blurred out. The child would be told this content may be unsafe. And so the child can just ignore it. That detection happened on device. No one was told. It's just local processing. Um, if the child then says, oh, I want to look at it, uh, then it warns the child, tells them about that this could be uh, unsafe. This, these, these things can be harmful. Are you sure you want to do this? Child can say yes. Now, if the, parent, if the child is 12 or under and the parent has turned on this notification capability, the child will then be told, um, if you choose to continue and view this, your parent will be notified that this has happened. Because of a fear, uh, I think a legitimate fear of some parents with young children is, what's happening that my child is being coached to keep from me uh, while they're being groomed? And yeah, that is um, yep. now 
there was somebody in my neighborhood who showed uh, Pornhub.com to these kids that are under 12 years old, right? And he's an older kid. He found out about it. He showed it to these kids. And the mother flipped out at the other mother and, like, how that was possible. They don't hang out anymore. Uh, th that's a point I'm trying to make. This, is a, this, this feature, I actually think there's nothing wrong with this feature. Not to right. mention that you are that you are uh, as a parent with a child Apple ID, yep. uh, you know, getting a notification about it. So this yeah. feature I do not uh, think is bad. At no, all. I don't have any problems with this. And again, I think this is going to push a lot of parents who are like, ah, you know, boys will be boys, girls will be girls. Bullshit. In this day and age with these tools, kids go, you talk about a bridge too far. I mean, kids just mm -hmm. don't realize what the hell they're doing and they do stupid shit. And yeah. I, in my day and, and in your day, back, you back in my day it. when I was owning Jurassic Park. That's right. Um, because we didn't have these devices. You did, you did something no. stupid. What do you have? Maybe a dozen people know about it. Yeah. Now you know about the whole world knows about it. Yeah. And really, we think parents more than anyone are in the best position to parent. Okay, so I just want to clarify this technology is different than the technology you're using with the CSAM. That's right, it is a hundred percent different. Okay, I lied. Another pause. This feature is using on-device machine learning to look for photos that might contain nudity. How confident are you in this, the algorithms that are looking at these photos? I mean, how confident are you guys gonna be that this is a nude image and not a rocket ship? <laughs> right. Um, so this is a machine learn classifier. It's very good, it's very accurate. Um, it will, it can make a mistake, right? It could, it could say a, a photo that uh, it's unlikely to be a rocket ship, um, but uh, you know, we've, we've had a tough time coming up with images that we can fool it with to do, to do our testing with because we wanted to be able to go through flows in the feature without all looking at nudity. Um, and it's very hard to fool it, um, but it can be fooled. Privacy experts spoke out about both of these announcements this week. With the CSAM feature, the Electronic Frontier Foundation said Apple was overreaching and creating a backdoor and a technology that could be abused. Many have signed a letter against these features. Who owns this phone? There's this famous Apple ad, the 1984 ad, where Apple is literally bashing Big Brother. Yet with these updates, there's this thought that Apple can reach into our pocket and change our phone in significant ways. I think our customers own their phones, uh, for sure. I think the feature we're talking about here, one needs to just continue to be reminded, is about only applying to data customers choose to store on Apple servers. I do believe the soundbite that got out early was, oh my God, Apple is scanning my phone for images. This is not what is happening. This is about images that are being stored in the cloud and an architecture for identifying in the most privacy protecting way uh, we can imagine uh, performing that process and in the most auditable and verifiable way possible. When this All right, so now, I mean, now here's, the, here's the point I wanna make here. All right. They're all up in arms because Apple is doing this when stuff is loaded to the cloud. Nobody, I didn't, I didn't see anybody say anything about, well, well wait a minute, how come? Where's Facebook getting these 200,000 images? How are mm -hmm. they scanning it? Right. Like, nobody even knew they were doing it. Right. right, exactly. It wasn't It wasn't like who really knew in the general public about this before that. By right. the way, Joanna Stern, you're not using your Apple Arcade three free months there, young lady, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but she's like, nah, I, I ain't doing that. And she hasn't backed up her phone, by the way, either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's falling behind on the curve. I I mean, I, I think that this whole thing, I, I think Apple is trying to make a step forward in the right direction. Where will it lead? I don't know. I mean, nobody knows the future. But I will say this. I, I feel this messaging that we've just looked at, I think as a parent, it, again, and it's, I think it's going to force to a degree parents who just let their children play with the phones and don't learn any of the technology to be aware it's not going to do anything for them 
because mm-hmm. they they buy the device for the child and let the let child run rampant. Mm-hmm. This is going to help the parents that are like that know what these devices can do and the potential of overstepping a little bit. Their child can you know get out there and not understand what they're really doing. This messaging will help the parents step in and say, "Hey, what, John? What are you doing here? You, you know, yeah, pay attention. This this is." You know, this has got to stop. Well, we're going to have to see, uh, you know, when the update will be applied. Obviously, in yep. iOS 15, that's going to be coming out. Uh, it'll obviously warn us when the, that update will be there. Uh, so I will, I, I'm not against it. I, I understand why they're doing it. I think they're, the feature in the messages is worth it now that I'm a parent. You know, if you're not a parent, eh, you know, you don't have to really worry about it. Uh, it's not going to be a feature unless you have the child, you know, feature. And also you have the option to not have this on. You don't have to use iCloud. So you could just turn off your iCloud yeah. and never have a backup and use iTunes instead. But, you know, last week I talked about in the top 10, you know, <laughs> troubleshooting moments, how iTunes is not the best option. So, you know, you do what you want. Again, and Apple said, it's your phone. You turn on what you want when right. you're on Facebook. Right. You are getting scanned no matter what you do. You don't That's have right. the option. So let's yeah, get you're that absolutely straight. right there. Yeah. Yep. So we'll end it on that note. So for all y'all. So I want to thank you for joining us for this podcast. Episode 95. We are five away from the big one. They can't wait for episode 100. Check out all of our YouTube videos on our channel. We really do appreciate it. 20K views on our pages video. 13K on your numbers. We are inspiring people to learn more about their Apple devices, specifically in iWork. Uh, so, which is exciting. I want to do more. Like I want to do one on a resume. I want to do one on final cut, you know, so this, there's stuff I want to do uh, to get more stuff and videos out there for training. Oh, we'll have more coming up. Well, we appreciate you guys joining us every single week for our episodes. We thank you. We will see you next time. And I love every single one of you. Stay well, Will. Stay well, Will. That's yeah. tough to say. <laughs> that's a tough, that's a tongue twister.